Hello, dear viewers, and thanks for joining us on this very, very important edition of Press Forum. We shall be talking education and we'll talk politics. Now, the COVID-19 pandemic is on everyone's lips, and its um, ramifications, its fallouts have caused a lot of innovations, one being the um, deviation from in-person training or classes to virtual. Today, we shall be talking about online learning that is gaining more grounds as the COVID-19 surge, especially the second phase. We have uh, experts here who shall be giving us the importance of studying online and how that can fetch you uh, some great benefits, if not jobs. We will also be talking about the first parliamentary session and the eldest member of parliament that is at the Senate, um, Chief von V. E. Mukete, during the opening session called on Cameroonians to show any form of anti-patriotism, some of which have given Cameroon we'll talk about that. And if time permits, we shall also be talking about the COVID-19 vaccine that is making waves across the world. It's only entering Africa now and in Cameroon, the Minister of Public Health Dr. Manauda Malachi is already banking the drums, the pots and pans, telling Cameroonians it's important for them to take the vaccine. We'll look why Cameroonians are so worried taking the vaccine. These and more will constitute the program today. We say thanks for joining us. With me here today, I have very, very nice personalities who have a grasp on the subject matter today. I have with me a regular panelist on the program. The face you've seen and know so well, Mr. Item Armstrong. Armstrong. He is a political analyst. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much, Mr. Yannick. It has been a pleasure being on this platform today again. I think uh, Cameroon is going through various times and there are a lot of issues that are causing us to be up on our feet. As such, it is just necessary that uh, from time to time we honor this invitation to uh, discuss more and guide ourselves on the current issues. Great. And also in the program, we are happy to have um, some three, uh, should say two ladies and a gentleman, they are all coming from an online academy, it's called Pride Academy International. With them we will be talking about the online learning and how it's gaining steam and how persons can gain fully occupy themselves even in school at home. We will talk with them. First we we'll talk with the administrative assistant, or rather I should say the communication assistant, Miss um, Helepia Barbara. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me, Yannick, mm -hmm. and good afternoon to all of you. Right. We will talk a lot on um, the innovations Bright Academy is bringing in the online sector. Uh, let me introduce the Innovation Hub Assistant, Doris Ngando. Thank you very much for coming, madam. Thank you for having me, Yannick, and good afternoon to all of the viewers. Right. Last but not the least, we have. Um, Terence Babu, thank you very much for coming. Babu. Thank you, Yannick, and good afternoon, Adela viewers. All right, he's an IT specialist. We're happy to have him here in the studio. And definitely, these are the persons who will be constituting the program today. We're excited bringing you the program live here in Boyam, uh, precisely in Bunjuma, where we are beaming. Now, we begin straight away. Online learning is in, it's on everyone's leaves, at least for now, because the COVID-19 pandemic is preventing children to go to school across the world, from the United States, Europe, right up to Asia. Students are now picking up learning at home. But there's already some disturbances on the mental and psychological health of children while they're studying. But most especially, how relevant is online learning to these students? Reason why here in Cameroon, the Minister of Secondary Education is already fine-tuning measures to ensure that online learning becomes the new normal in the country. And she's already encouraging her collaborators across the region to encourage uh, children to go online and study to us to reduce the huge crowd that always come with learning in person. 
and also she's already providing different equipment to see that that happens but how many Cameroonians know about online learning how many Cameroonians are very comfortable studying online reason why we have um, these persons here to talk with us I, I'd like to begin with you Madam Gandu to, to, to talk about first of all the, the necessity maybe I will not articulate it so well and you do it very well um, it is not as if online learning is coming on now it's been there in the past but there is a lot of emphasis now why thank you Yannick the reason we are having emphasis now need so much on online learning mm -hmm. is owing to the fact that online learning presently we are in the we are at a time where we face so many challenges mm -hmm. globally um, talking about um, what is happening today about the COVID-19 and we are having so many institutions shut to go to get shut down and so many people will be have will have to stay at home so online learning is there to overcome that barrier because you will not need to go to um, a regular institution probably for you to get um, knowledge but with the online system of learning you can stay from the comfort of your house and get the knowledge you of course acquire when you go to a regular classroom in addition to that Yannick online learning nowadays is too very flexible because take for example you are a worker and you work somewhere and you see the need to add knowledge to yourself because of um, a need for professional growth and you might not have so much time to leave your work and go to a regular institution then you see the need for online learning because there is that flexibility for you to be able to schedule your lectures at your own pace for example you might be able to close from work and go to your house and schedule your learning for you that you take it maybe at 11 pm or so so it gives you that flexibility for you to acquire more knowledge at the comfort of your home right Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You, you've, you've explained it so well, and I love it. And it cues in with the next question I'm, I'm, I'm about to ask. Before, this would have been a perfect dwarf because fewer persons were engaged, and perhaps the internet condition could accommodate that number. Now, we're talking about, for instance, if you have uh, 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 10 million learners online, I want to bring in the IT specialist. If you're an IT specialist, you should know how this jargon work. 30, uh, uh, 10 million persons studying at the same time with the bandwidth of Cameroon, even the equipment and everything. Do, do you think that it, it is even feasible that we can have comfortable learning considering our online strength in terms of internet condition, even in terms of the availability of these uh, working machines, computers? Okay, thank you, Yannick. Uh, thank you for this question. This also comes like a challenge to, to the to the communication uh, companies, because uh, and to online platform as well, because it's actually difficult at this time for a good number of people to study online due to the bandwidth, like you said. But these um, online platforms, like especially at Bright Academy, we we have uh, with our um, sophisticated infrastructure, we have set up uh, two learning uh, methods which enable people not actually to get crowded on a particular platform or a particular learning uh, method. That's the synchronous and the asynchronous. With the synchronous method of learning online, you are able to study that live. And with the asynchronous, you study um, anytime and then anywhere that you want. So this gives the possibility for, for the number of people that we have to be able to acquire knowledge at the same time. That's you actually, you, you will not actually consume this uh, this content immediately, but you are able to schedule their own space for, to study online. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. Now, you, you're already talking about hope. I, uh, I, I think I should come to Doris before I come to Barbara to let us situate Bright Academy in, 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 in all of these contexts because it's, it's important and wh who you are and what you offer and how that is relevant in this present um, context we find ourselves, health context we find ourselves. Who are you and, and what do you offer? Thank you, Yannick. We are Bright Academy International. Mm -hmm. And Bright Academy, it's a professional and career development institution 
that is how to reskill or provide skills relevant for the 21st century job market and so at bright academy we give you those skills that you need and get the hands-on experience that you will need to put you at the required career expectation of your choice we offer various products and services um, certifications accredited courses and non-accredited courses and i'm sure as we progress in this program you'll be able to get much more an elaborate version of our packages that we give. right let me bring in uh analyst here item I, I item looking at online learning at this moment uh we know the best part of 2020 was dedicated to online learning. We saw virtual classes going on here and there, but the question has always been, are these children really studying, going owing the distraction and the fact that they are only getting accustomed to all of this? How do you rise up or reconcile this innovation and the, the, the will of, of, of these learners? I think uh, the effect of technology and the effect of COVID-19 has not left the education community rather out. It has also engulfed them, considering that the educational community is one that uh, uh, makes use of a huge number of population. I think the COVID-19 has come and it is to stay and it has affected it so much. So considering that 1.2 billion people all over the world have uh, 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 been home considering that 186 countries have been affected powerfully by this COVID-19 and have decided to shut down their school. It is just obvious that technology play a vital role to do what? To continue training these young youths who are the future of tomorrow. But Yanni, permit me to answer your question in the right context. Um, IT, is, uh, IT technology is a new Africa uh, in most African countries and in most communities. And more even though in the urban cities we might have realized that it has been for a longer period of time, but when you go to those remote areas where people are not used to using even a common uh, what they call in their parlance choronko, how can they manipulate an Android phone or talk less a computer to follow e-learning? So these are the problem we face, and we also have like uh, trained personnel, especially in the educational domain. You will see this also drives me to uh, uh, equipment. Our campuses are not equipped. We have ministries here and there created to cater for this. But then you will move to an IT center in a basic primary school or secondary school and you will see eventually no computers, nothing, nothing. Then tell me how these children will be brought up in, the, in this te technological setup to fit in this kind of concept during the coronavirus. You realize that it is just a blabbing to say that our children are home studying because they are home sleeping and snoring and to be candid they are not doing what they are supposed to do because first they don't even know how to connect themselves and even the teachers who are supposed to drill them on this aspect of e-learning they don't even know how to go about it mm -hmm. most teachers don't even know what is a zoom or uh, 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 studying process and on so on so i think that before the educational community want to present this to the public, they should first of all have carried out some kind of training sessions with uh, uh, the teachers and so on to cause it to be effective. Right. That's, that's a very good one there. I, I, I'd like to bring you in, Barbara, to, to, to say that um, looking at all of these uh, problems, what, what do you think um, innovators like yourself bring in to not only solve the COVID-19 problem, but some of these other challenges that are already identified because it, it doesn't only suffice for you to, to tell people to join you. It also suffice for you to tell people we can accommodate some of these other challenges. Like um, someone may ask, but if I put my child to study in a Bright Academy, it would, be, would he or she even be interested? How do you draw up that interest in somebody who may be ignorant on the importance of that. All right, Yannick, thank you. I'm very happy with the context with which the last presenter presented this situation. Now, um, at Bright Academy International, we have not just gone into the online learning aspect without doing some research. 
We have carried out a lot of market research to actually find out what these challenges are and how we can come in to mitigate some of these challenges. One thing I'd like to tell our viewers, Yannick, is that first of all, at Bright Academy, we have the training of trainers course, which teaches teachers how to teach online. Mm -hmm. First of all, you, you cannot start teaching somebody without knowing yourself how to use a platform. So at Bright, we teach these teachers. We understand that they know, they have the, the mastery of their topics, they have the knowledge. But there are a lot of them out there who do not even know how to, how to handle some of these platforms. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we have done is, we have created this course in a manner that will um, give these teachers the competences on how to teach online because that is the first that's where we we take off that's the takeoff point another thing is that at bright like i said before we didn't just delve into online learning at bright we do on-site and online learning wow that gives us the opportunity to teach people gradually on how to adopt online learning for instance we have students who come to our premise probably they do not know how to teach online but from there we also teach them how to teach online and of course our teachers who teach online you don't start teaching without taking this course which teaches you how to teach online so basically Yannick those are some of the aspects we have covered in um, trying to teach people online and again as um, um, our IT expert mentioned first of all our platform has been created in a manner that suits everybody for instance the, uh, the synchronous method of online learning where you have the opportunity to, to be live, to interact with your teacher. In the course of interaction, there are a lot of things that you're going to learn. And of course, you have the asynchronous, which gives you the opportunity to study at any time of your choice. Yannick, I bet you that if a parent is very keen, he would be able to follow their student's online learning attitude. Right. That is why the asynchronous is very important because you can choose to set up your child's um, learning time at the time which is convenient for you so that you monitor and I'm sure as we go on the program we'll discover a lot of aspects where we have tried to mitigate some of these challenges right we always say um, we we can only have innovations when they are challenges and your academy uh, has Doris your academy has brought in an innovation hub it, it's the word innovation means quite a lot to different people. Uh, by this, what do you mean innovation hub? And how does this situate itself in this context of COVID-19? Okay, Annie. Um, innovation hub typically would mean that it is a place or an environment that provides facilities to promote the development of new ideas, new um, partnerships, creates inquisitive perspectives and create new platforms. So typically an innovation hub is there to bring out something new and there are different types of innovation hubs in our ecosystem. We have um, social innovation hubs, Yannick, and social innovations hub are there to provide solutions to social challenges. We also have tech innovation hubs and they are there to provide solutions to tech related challenges. And of course, we have um, business innovation hubs, which is typically what we do at Bright Academy. And these business innovation hubs provide solutions to business and professional and um, career related challenges. So generally, that is what, when you hear the word innovation hub, you should try to see it as something that brings out um, a solution, brings out something new as a solution to an existing challenge. So to, to a mother in Bukwango now watching you, or maybe someone in uh, Jumbe Penja watching you, how, how, how do you situate it to the common man? Uh, the child isn't going to school, or maybe too much work, you're not, you're not fit to make such long travels to have this investment. How does Innovation Hub come to solve this problem? Okay, for a, for a, for a mother at Penja, mm -hmm who has a child that maybe wants to get um, a kind of training. Yes, a training or maybe even the advanced level of FESCO. Yes. Mm -hmm. At um, Bright Academy, typically, just like our colleague said, we have the online system. Mm -hmm. So if you are in um, um, Penja and you really want to acquire a particular skill that is um, delivered at Bright Academy, you will not um, normally need to leave Penja to come to, to Bright. 
on-site campus, you can always go into our online platforms and you, because all our trainings that we deliver online are done on-site as well. So if you do not um, find it very um, convenient for you to come on-site on-premise to get a particular training that you want, of course, you enroll on, an, on our online platform, Yannick, and you get the same experience that you will have if you get come to our on-site premise. So it's what, what you talk of online platform? Is it WhatsApp? Is it Facebook? <laughs> What, what, what is what's the online platform are you talking about? Also, does someone just go to Google and type right? Like no, Google? we have um, a specific platform that we have developed at uh, Bright Academy. We use that's uh, only shared. It's only shared with persons when you when you when enroll you are to Bright oh, okay. Academy. All right, yes. it's interesting. Yes. All right. <laughs> is, is that all what is that all what you do, or you have other things you do to accommodate? Because actually, the needs are so many. Is that all what you do? Definitely not. Most of packages we offer at Bright Academy International. First of all, I would like to begin with our professional accredited programs at Bright. Professional accredited programs mean that the certificates you get are from reputable, internationally recognized institutions. Now, under the professional accredited programs, we have programs like PMP, which is Project Management Professional. We have the SMAC. Scrum Master Accredited Certification, and we have OHS, Occupational Health and Safety. Now, aside that, we have accredited language programs, like the TOEFL and the ICE for English language, and then we have TESDAF for German. That's not all. We also offer professional supervised courses, and these have been divided into the IT and the business department. Under the IT department, we offer courses like graphics design, um, graphics design, MS package, you know, and then under the business department, we have computerized accounting, entrepreneurship, office automation, and digital marketing, of course, because the world is going digital. So we have to teach people how to, to market their products digitally. It sounds digitally. more or less like um, a higher institution. Not uh, just the higher institution. Uh, Bright Academy is a professional and career development. Okay. So mm -hmm. we... We, we impact skills in people that are needed for the 21st century job market. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, as there's a saying that if you don't go with innovation, you stay out of the market. Definitely. So, for instance, if you're a marketer and are used to the analog way of marketing, you definitely stay out of out of market. So, mm -hmm. you'd have to probably adopt digital marketing. Now, that's not all. I like to continue with our programs. We offer non-accredited programs, like I mentioned before. We do the training of trainers for online teaching. So, we teach teachers how to teach online and Yannick we have been uh, into discussions with schools and institutions uh, trying to uh, give them these services to come to our premises because we understand that we are at the level where there's there are a lot of challenges particularly the COVID-19 and we want to make it um, possible that we teach these teachers so that they can be able to deliver even without being in an, a, a physical classroom. We also offer um, preparatory classes for the GCE both advanced level and ordinary level. Like you asked before, if if probably uh, we have a mother in Penja who has never been to a classroom, Th we have a manner of teaching in um, Bright Academy which starts from scratch. We teach you not only how to answer these questions, but how you can perfectly interpret them. Now we also offer um, preparatory classes for public exams like um, NSET, ENS and the rest. Now, when you ask what actually we are, we are a professional. I like to repeat again because there are a lot of people who are interested in this concept. We are a professional and career development institution. When you use the word professional, what do you mean? Now, um, how, how do you distinguish yourself from the others? Okay. Now, uh, Yannick, our trainings are more practical. Okay. They are not theoretical like other institutions. Mm -hmm. Now, you, you, you bear with me that these days, when an employer wants to maybe employ an employee, they'll ask you um, what can you do or what experiences do you have. Now at Bright Academy International, we teach you, we equip you with company skills that are necessary for the 21st century job market. We don't just probably teach you the history of a concept and all of that. Professionals teach you, not just anybody, because our teachers uh, have been given that orientation to teach company skills, not theoretical skills. All right. Yes. Now, I, I don't know. Let me bring in um, your IT specialist here, Terence. As <laughs> I, 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 a professional setting, how, how is this set? 
for an online learning because uh, here at High TV we try we, we did virtual learning once and it's all about putting a camera in front of the teacher who is teaching and looking at the camera the students are in the camera in other settings we've seen they use zoom chatting and all of that what, what is your setting like how convinced can I be that you have that apt setting to pass on online training how do you put up your setting okay thank you Annie, for that question at bright academy we don't only look at the like um, uh, the last presenter uh, of the challenges like uh, COVID-19 we don't only look at those challenges we look at the future of learning like from now on you you've, you have noticed that most people are actually talking of online learning online learning but they don't they don't have a strategy they don't have a strategy for this at Bright Academy we look at we look at strategy first before setting up an online platform how do we intend to deliver this um, this, uh, this training to, the, to our audience. Secondly, we look at how they are going to consume this content. It's not all, it's not all about uh, setting up a platform and running it, no. This strat the strategy that we offer at Dried Academy to set up this learning, we look at the busy, the, busy, uh, the busy world. A lot of people are busy. You don't have time to, to, sit, to sit like you, you talk of uh, you setting up a camera and people mm -hmm. sit and learn. On our platform, we have tools that are very interactive, like the Learn Dash, which enables um, our trainers to upload courses and um, content that our audience will be able to consume. That uh, you can schedule this and you study it anytime, not actually you having seated. For example, you are a business person. For example, do you think you have to leave your business to go and sit somewhere on a camera or in front of a camera to listen to, to, a, to a trainer? No, you can actually schedule um, your time and uh, uh, you, it matches with the course that you have choose to study. And at Bright Academy, that, uh, Bright Academy, that's what we actually offer. All right, so you, you, you work according to the dictate of the learner. Is that what the context you're saying? We provide flexibility. Right, now let me come to our analyst here. Um, do you think that government should invest more on online learning, considering that it, it, it could be less um, capital intensive and definitely it also works in line with preventing COVID-19. Do you think that the government, in essence, what I'm asking is to invest in some innovators like yes. the ones we have? Yes. There are I, many of them out there. I think uh, when the uh, ID uh, uh, man was speaking, what came into my mind was, why can't government partner with these fine minds? You know, one problem that we have in our countries uh, today is that the government wants to do eventually everything. No. There are instances where when you see people with skills, you partner with them. Uh, I don't know, in democracy, uh, there is a definition, a common definition that the government, uh, uh, the, uh, that is democracy is something, it goes down right to the people. Is the government of the people for the people by the people and also you can go on with the definition. So therefore, it is not only the government alone, it's not only the, 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 uh, the ministries, in quotes, that have that responsibility to do these things. If you see somebody with an expatriate, pull him on and try to send people in to study. For example, we have today teachers who are in various schools teaching in remote areas who feel they can continue with their education. Do they leave those schools to come to maybe Boya, Oya, Wunde, Odwara, the urban areas where we have the university milieu to study? Typically, no. In that sense, they can stay at the comfort of the area where they are carrying out their uh, uh, civil, uh, uh, civil responsibilities and do what others are doing as well. I mean, learn as well. Therefore, I will encourage the government to do more, especially with the uh, coming of this COVID-19, even though Without COVID-19, we have realized that the world have taken another shift. Where marketing, for example, Amazon, the way richest man today is somebody who went digital. And going digital, he has been able to take over the world. People who felt that is sitting and doing business at the comfort of the community have failed and he has, he's at the top. Mm -hmm. You can leave that and you, 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 you will realize that even edu 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 educational communities that go digital have, are, are more known all over the world than those that feel that they can stay just within the, 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 their, their backyard to have the few students they can have. So therefore, I'm encouraging the government, 
especially uh, 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 the, the, the educational stakeholders, to do more. Because, like I said, if they, they don't do that, their education will not be efficient. What I mean by efficient is that they will be deceiving the parents, deceiving themselves that they are training, training young Cameroonians for the future of tomorrow while they are in their houses doing nothing. And secondly, when we talk of this, we talk of accessibility and time. You cannot stay at the comfort of, uh, 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 maybe you cannot be in Kumba or let's say uh, uh, Penja, like you mentioned here, and you want to at the same time. That is issue of accessibility. Find yourself in Boya. You also look at affordability. There are some people who cannot pay the huge transport from the north to go to afford education somewhere far. In that sense, they can afford education just within where they are and have the, have the same certificate that somebody who have traveled all that long distance also have, and they can do extremely well. Today, what I, even I sitting here, what I have as a difficulty that I have behind my mind is that if I'm given an office and I sit, what will I do if I'm presented computers in front of me to start doing some kind of work? What will I do? And those questions remain unanswerable for some time until I have to train myself individually. And I want to also say that improving student attendance, I think technology will, will do that work. Because it's not everybody that will be able to leave his home every day to the campus. Therefore, you can improve on the attendance of students. Somebody can say, oh, I'm not health, I'm not, uh, health wise, I'm not sound. I'm going to trekking from here to the classroom, I'm faint along the way, but I have my computer by the side. If perhaps there is uh, something digital, I can also follow up. So, uh, to just cut the whole story short, I want to encourage our government to invest a lot in technology because if we stay back in our archaic ways that our parents did in, 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 in the olden days and we are where we are still today, it means that we are failing our future youths and our children that we are giving birth to. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, um, we all understand that the second waves of the COVID-19 pandemic is already very alarming. There is no gain saying about that. And governments around the world are already taking measures. We know the prime minister and head of government was on TV um, just about last week, and he was talking about measures that have to be refined. And from the look of things, some government... And uh, possibly, why, why not Cameroon? I mean, if things get worse, such measures can come in. Uh, would it not have, have affect brilliant ideas like, like the ones you guys are putting in? Or, or you've put in some mitigation or ad adaptation measures to ensure that when such moments come, you can easily overcome? I'm talking to you, Terry. Okay, thank you, Yannick, uh, for that question. Um, like you earlier mentioned, talking about Bright Register, an online um, institution as well, not only talking of our on-site services. Now, at Bright, we don't only think about a COVID-19 uh, particularly at the moment, because we have also stressed uh, stress bringing up awareness since last year uh, to talk about the future of learning. We think, uh, we think more of uh, globalization. That's the future of learning. We think globalization. We don't just want to, to limit ourselves locally, but because we think about the future of these uh, young ones, we are all young ones here, how we are going to, um, to, be, able to, to be able to carry on our activities in the future. Now, at Bright Academy, since we think more of the future of learning and globalization and when it comes to education, we have actually um, developed our platform, which is uh, functional right at the moment, which you can access um, on uh, internet, that's www.brightacademy.net, to be able to study online, despite the fact that uh, we have uh, challenges like COVID-19. For example, like the last presenter mentioned, uh, you, you, have, you are not actually um, sound, and you live in your house, you can, uh, any, uh, any other thing can happen along the way. But now you can stay home to follow up these uh, studies online using our platform. This, so we have actually taken these measures into consideration. Right, which is interesting. Um, Thank you, Nick. Now, it, is, is there, is there you know, any other thing that really be convinced? I mean, conviction is the most important thing. And even even at the moment, many parents are still very, uh, I should say, very low in understanding the importance of online learning. Many still feel that on-site learning is the best, which is why these kind of innovations are very new and uncomfortable to many parents. So, is there any other thing peculiar 
in your institution that can add more conviction to the importance of online learning and to bring in not only parents, but we understand that many, many, uh, uh, we have many graduates of Segway. They just left school. They have many theoretical, they have good theoretical knowledge, but very little when it comes to practical knowledge. And yet they are lottery. Many of them are doing voluntary services here or there and are being exploited. This group of persons who are still very adamant on online potentials, how do you bring them in? Okay, Yanni, thank you. At Bright Academy, we, the way we developed our platform, we have um, inculcated a parental management access system. That is to say that parents who have um, students enrolled with us for any of our training will have the ability to monitor or track the progress of their of their students through the parent the parental the parental management access system. Then, in addition to that, you may you may mention of um, students or graduates who must have um, finished um, maybe university and they are loitering about. At Bright Academy, we have um, a service that um, manages those set of people because we do uh, mentoring and career development. That is to say that if a student or a graduate leaves the university and of course you do not really know yet or have identified a particular career path you want to pursue, we will encourage you to come at Bright Academy because there we give you the orientation about um, your career expectation. We just need to talk to you and give you that orientation. For example, you are a, um, you left the University of uh, Boya and um, graduated with um, um, a degree in accountancy. Then you're loitering about, you do not know how to go about it, but yet you see um, jobs related to accounting. If you come to Bright Academy, we try to add up to your accounting, for example, we, we, we encourage you to maybe take a program in computerized accounting. That gives you an urge and you can take this program either online or, 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 or on site. So you you having um, taking a program in computerized accounting gives you an urge over someone who just maybe left the university mm -hmm. with a simple a degree just in accounting, and that places you in a position where you'll be able to deliver that specific skill because this is what is required actually in the industry an employer wants to know what actually you can deliver so if for example an employer um, um open, there is a job um, opportunity for a comp uh, for a company who needs a computerized accountant they will choose you over someone who just had just the accounting so a bright academy we give you that orientation that puts you up above your competitors Right. Wow. This uh, is okay. Yeah, yeah. I want to add to what uh, my colleague Doris, uh, Doris actually said. Um, we we are also looking at the future, not only the future of learning, but we we do more. Or since we are training these people uh, with these skills to be able to acquire job uh, jobs out there. Now, I want to take an uh, an example of uh, talk more of uh, remote re uh, remote jobs. Now, most most. Um, 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 people around locally, they don't. Act, they are not actually familiar that you can be at home and you have a job somewhere. Example: Canada, USA. Why? Because first of all, they are not familiar with uh, learning online or with online tools that enable you to interact with uh, with this type of uh, opportunities. Now they are only familiar with going to school, getting a certificate. You go out there and you start looking for physical jobs. It it actually is going to get difficult in the, in the long run. Now because a lot of uh, a lot of uh, companies are developing. And they are looking at uh, working remotely. So, what at Bright Academy we also offer this orientation on how we can help um, these young people to acquire these um, jobs on these jobs and be able to work remotely, remotely, rather than depending on you just having to sit at home, maybe with your certificates. You are running from one office to another. You can just sit with your laptop. Uh, you have your internet. You are able to to apply for jobs. And most of the times, they will ask you, "Have you studied online? What what?" What are your skills? You, how do you interact with, uh, with devices? And if you don't have these skills to interact with devices or this means to interact with devices, it's going to be difficult for you. So at Bright, we also offer the orientation to, to, uh, to help these people to interact with online tools. Thank you. Right. Now, we're going to take a pause on uh, this issue of online learning. And definitely, uh, we'll come back to talk maybe a little bit later. But I want you guys to stay because the next topic is, is still about the country and how things run. Um, we're talking about the worry of many Cameroonians. We understand that 
around the world as a means to mitigate the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. Governments are already calling on their citizens to take up the COVID-19 vaccines that are being injected to uh, at the foresight or the forearm. Different jobs are being given to ensure that the, the citizens become um, immunized from the uh, pandemic or from the virus. But there is a worry because many are raising that the vaccine could have more side effects than earlier expected. And on the fact that the main vaccine, the main vaccine donor, the AstraZeneca vaccine, that is already making waves across the world, including Africa, is already having side effects in other parts that have been given, the worries are even bigger. And which is why here in Cameroon, the Minister of Public Health, Dr. Manauda Malachi, is drumming up uh, support from citizens, encouraging them to take the vaccine when eventually it comes. But many Cameroonians are worried. And I want to find out from all of you. Let me begin with Item Armstrong. Can you articulate why many Cameroonians will raise the worry over the vaccine? And to you, do you think that there is a cause? Is there any cause for, for worry? I think uh, this is all about the politics where people frame up stories based on some just because they perceive that uh, this uh, the, the white man uh, has, we call it the fear that the white man is more better than the black man or the black man is more better than the white man, all those kind of confusion that is causing us to not have trust in one another. And you realize that when COVID-19 started, the African society, traditional society, struggle with their herbs and to an extent, most of them were angry that none of their herbalists were recognized worldwide despite the fact that in their little corners they did uh, their best even though not scientifically proven but they felt that they have solved some cases of COVID-19 and the world gave deaf ears so there is no need for the, the, the West at this point to feel that they can import uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, drugs for them to take. That is where most government are feeling that no, it must not be the worst, it must not be the worst. But the question that I'm neither from the medical uh, 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 field, but most worried that a lame Cameroonian and any other person has is what will be the side effect of COVID-19? That is the highest worry. And that is a question that remains unanswerable. If I take the, 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 the drugs and behave abnormal, who takes the responsibility? And we know that in our, this our present decision, governments have refused to take responsibility whenever anything happened to any individual. And that is why many feel that they will stay back whenever they feel that it is of help. They can now take the vaccine. But I want to encourage uh, each and everyone outside there to key in. I don't think that the government that we democratically put, um, uh, 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 put them will sacrifice us as goods for selfish interests. And that is why I'm feeling that if perhaps they feel that their conscience is clear and they want to save the lives of their beloved citizen. Why don't us take the vaccine? And if they can lead by example, sit and take the vaccine and nothing happens to them. There's no reason why we should refuse to take the vaccine. But then, what I am saying on this platform is that there should be a genuine intention. Mm -hmm. What I mean by genuine intention, nobody should try to play with the life of another. You know, human right. The first human right that we have is that uh, the, the right to life. It is sacred. Nobody has that right to tamper with the life of another. As such, I will believe in that we have legal minds everywhere, littered in the world, all over the world. They can start up to their feet to fight for our rights should in case something goes wrong somewhere. Right. Now, uh, we understand the, the uh, barrage, um, something that looks like the vaccine uh, got in some schools across Cameroon. We know of what happened in in uh, the south region, even here in the southwest region, in in, in the in Meme division, um, there was some rumor that the vaccine was to be uh, instituted to some students, and there was kind of a commotion. We hear even is it cause to worry, uh, Doris? Because they have been taking this vaccine in the past, 
uh, we know of uh, yellow, f is there yellow fever vaccine? Yes. You taking yellow fever vaccine? These things are not produced here in Cameroon. Why is there so much worry about this one to you as a, as a woman and uh, as a Cameroonian? Why is there so much worry across the country, not only in Cameroon? Yannick, you make mention of the fact that uh, there have been um, traces of the vaccine um, in some schools in Meme. Mm -hmm. I just want to highlight the fact that I think um, two days ago, um, I went, um, I closed from work and went um, to visit my mother up in Boyatown. And my junior ones there were like, um, they had um, some people come to school in the, some of the schools up in Boyatown and they were trying to um, administer the vaccines mm -hmm. to them and um, parents some parents immediately came to school and eventually the military stormed and that was not done i want to say that the idea generally of giving um, vaccines to uh, people is to prevent a particular threat or cause but then in our present dispensation we've had cases where we've seen um other people who uh, probably have taken the vaccine in uh, maybe Europe and America with um, funny syndromes. Mm -hmm. So I think that is one of the major fear we have here, especially as Cameroonians, because these vaccines are not produced by us. So if we are having this major fear and maybe the government still sees the need to go ahead with um, these vaccines, I think they should be able to create more awareness to their citizens. They should be able to educate the population of the importance of us mm -hmm. taking these vaccines because other than that i think we we'll still have the idea that uh, maybe if we take the vaccine we'll be maybe funny mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. so there should be massive awareness mm -hmm. of the necessity to get the vaccine the vaccine yeah very important point yeah. there because like like you said uh my own daughter also told me they already hinting in school that they'll yeah. be taking this vaccine yeah. in the days ahead. ahead and the minister of secondary education like other government ministers are already sending communiques that these vaccines are obligatory in schools. It is not only in Cameroon that these worries are being raised. Even in the United States, the black community are already very uh, reluctant to take this vaccine. Yet, somehow, somewhere, um, it appears the government is resounding some obligation on the citizens. Do you think that, like many have been suggesting, that it should be it should start from government officials uh let's see their reaction in one week before other coming you think such such um narratives should come to reality before many cameroonians will be convinced about the vaccine all right Yannick, um, i'm not a medical personnel definitely you know i just want to say yeah communication um, personnel <laughs> should communicate of course <laughs> I just want to say before you introduce, for instance, let me draw from marketing. Before you introduce a product in the market, you probably have to tell people, give people enough reason why they should do that. Mm -hmm. We have had a lot of information in the media where, like Doris said, people reacted negatively to this vaccine. For instance, you had the first vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine, which showed um, negative um, signs or people reacted badly to it. We have already had that in the media. That they do that then they should because they are the people who are convincing us to take the vaccine Be because you know? the president of the united states started by taking the vaccine in, in of the course why, so why is it different in other places for instance as the as the minister of public health if i want the indigents to follow suit you should be able to show that you are doing what you're asking people to do 
people actually um, learn when they see you doing it. If it's very necessary, if they are very sure that the vaccine is very safe for all of us, then it's important they can do it to change the mindsets of Cameroonians. Because if they don't, there are a lot of people out there who would not take it because they will feel that they want to sacrifice us. So if it's very necessary that these government officials be the first to take it, then they should. Yeah. Right. That, that's, that's interesting. Exactly. I, I want to ask you a personal question. Terence. <laughs> if the vaccine comes in one of you here, will you take it? <laughs> Uh, I think I'm not going yeah, to take it. Yeah, I think you will not I, take I'll it. not be able to take this vaccine. Why? Um, Your concern is, is normal with many Cameroonians. Yes. So I want you to give a reason why. Um, I've actually listened to, listened to each and every one here, and it boils yeah. down to more of information. I want to tell you that uh, there, are cities, there, are Camero there are Cameroonians that, are, that have information that the government does not even have mm -hmm. when it comes to this COVID-19. And we understand that... Uh, those are the decentralized authorities of the central administration to ensure that uh, the COVID-19 uh, vaccine is given and it is given keen attention. So let me be honest, uh, I think I will abide
those God on the rise this 2020. Yeah, it got on the rise. Even here in but Boya, there are schools here in Boya that we had as many as 20 persons infected. Yes, Mr. Yanni, what is really killing me inside is that I've never seen a COVID 19 patient. To be honest with you, it's you more like of say COVID some, yeah, some people feel that it's more of a COVID 19 patient. An ordinary Cameroonian feel that it's a propaganda mm -hmm. because it just you just hear that one died of COVID. That one died of COVID. You can, you, you we always hear of symptoms, but I've not seen anybody manifesting the symptoms. I have, I have seen a COVID 19 patient manifesting I've the seen, symptoms. Well, I don't know about manifesting yeah, symptoms. Because because they, they test it. Because they test it. actually debunked it those conspiracy theories we don't want to bring them here um the last question uh, why i should say the last <laughs> person no not the last person she, i still also have to ask doris will you take the covid 19 vaccine <laughs> <laughs> will you you know well as of now i won't you won't <laughs> why you will know, you not take um, the covid 19 vaccine i think i've not had more information no. I have sufficient information, especially um, in relation to the side effects of mm -hmm. that. Because most um, vaccines or medications we see out there, you get an elaborate list of um, um, a, a side effects. related side effects to that medication. But have you tried to Google it to see if you can get the side effects of COVID? I, I, I think that is what I'm saying that our government should be able to communicate enough and give us that sufficient awareness mm -hmm. with that. Should I take the COVID-19 at this point? Right, like what are the threats? Like we had um, the polio vaccine. We have pictures of mm -hmm. how you'd look like mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. you don't take the COVID-19. Mm -hmm. You have the effects and all of that. Let's have more of those kind of communication. Maybe not just by telling us. Maybe show us some graphics. Definitely. Engage more in communication. We don't know it's still here and then make people to what? Many well, if you're, if you're scared of an illness, you take it will even give you more reasons to take the vaccine. For instance, if you look at a child on a picture of a polio sensitization um, poster, for example, I think that will give me more reason to want to vaccinate my child because I don't want the baby to look like that. Mm -hmm. So let's have, let's engage people more. Let's en um, invest more in engageful communication. Okay. It's not just about tweets or about some press release. Let's have detailed communication right. when it comes to this vaccine. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I think um, I was going to add. Um, I think like uh, our analyst here talked of. Uh, he said the the, the la language too also matters. Like, mm -hmm. COVID nineteen is, is it's already impacting fear, and the language that people go about talking about the vaccine and the solution, it which is bringing more fear anyway. 
So how do you expect people to actually accept this vaccine? The, 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 the virus is, uh, is, has impacted fear. The vaccine also is, is already impacting fear in, amongst every other citizen in the country. So uh, the language also matters. I would, like he talked of the uh, Minister of Territorial Administration, the language which he used to uh, like inform the public whether they are going to take this vaccine or not. And the Prime Minister, these are two different uh, the languages they used. It, it is going to impact uh, Cameroonians in two different ways. Exactly. Right. Yeah, I think I was also going to say that um, if you look at the communique that the University of Boya uh, disseminated out on the 12th of March 2021, that they said uh, they urged the university community, starting from the central administration right up to the student, to submit to uh, the voluntary uh, testing uh, unit, rapid diagnosis. So, uh, why is it coming at this point that the vaccine is around? Those are questions that young Cameroon they will feel that like it's just an indirect way where when you are tested, you are will be held hostage to take the vaccine. And then secondly, this university community, from the way the, 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 the community was disseminated out, that if you don't have that document, you are not going to be allowed access into the campus. These are threat documents that are, are, are contrary to the statement of the prime minister. To take measures to prevent COVID-19 is the responsibility, inalienable responsibility of each and every Cameroonian. But to force them to some kind of aspect is trampling on their right because you, you don't want them to make their voluntary decisions at times. And I want to say that uh, when you look at... No, but, but, but to you, do you think the University of Boya has done something wrong? I mean the statement that the user, if you don't have... No, but it's, it's also, it's also an obligation access. for you to... COVID-19 is evolving. No, but, but it doesn't mean that if you have the test proving you negative, in two days' time, you are going to be still negative. Mm -hmm. You can be negative and in your, on your way to the campus, you are positive. So I think there should be continuous measure to ensure that they prevent... For example, if you look at the, the, the government in place trying to tell us to take measures, you look at the military, they are jam-packed on top of a car, everywhere. Those are people that will be down to ensure tomorrow that the university students should not enroll into the campus. But when you see them on a the car, they are just touching one another. You look at the way the people are doing their things. I think we should lead by example. It's just like I used to tell people, if the military are saying that we should respect road majors, you see them instead driving at the middle of the road. What kind of example are they leading by? We are, we are trying to transform our community and killing the community at the same time. All right. But let me just inform you that you can't travel out of the, 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 your country if you don't do the COVID-19 test. And it appears you do it at every stop that you make in the world. So I don't think the University of Boya is inventing any wheel here. It's not some rocket science that they're trying to bring in. But it's just to take mitigating. That's, I, that's a, that's a yeah, mitigating I think, measure. I, I think mitigating the, the measure. measure what we call uh, mm -hmm. uh, health something around the university where you have to bring a health document. It should be incorporated into that. Definitely, when the, when the, the university the academic year already you have to go to the health unit. The academic the university year has already to carry out such, yeah, such a health test. Okay. So that and that COVID nineteen should be attached because it's just one of the killer disease, uh, diseases among many, like HIV and the other. We should not just focus on COVID nineteen and forget about the others. Right now, I, I was going to ask myself that question and answer. So I am going to take that vaccine if it's put. <laughs> in front of us today i'm going to take the vaccine because i feel that that vaccine is going to immunize myself and it will help the community prevent from covid 19 pandemic if covid 19 pandemic was already killing and many are blaming it on some countries that created it i think that the vaccine in coming would not be as deadly as the covid 19 itself but it's going to prevent the um, infection of COVID-19 pandemic. And well, like you all said, it's good the government communicates it more, but that vaccine is already being administered. There are so many Cameroonians who have already taken the vaccine, even out of the country. So it's, it's, not, it's not the first time we should encourage the vaccine administered to a community, to others. Um, we'll definitely be wrapping up our discussion today. Uh, but before we leave, I'd like to get last words from all of you for many of the topics we've said, but most especially on the importance of people to do online learning from Bryce Academy and all of that. Let me start with you. I'd like to start with you, 
stories. I don't know. I, I like to, I started with you. I'll end with you. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'll end with you. So let me start with you. <laughs> yes. Barbara, tell me, we're leaving. So what are your last words? All right. Um, my last words to our listeners, is, our viewers, sorry, is to take online learning seriously mm -hmm. because online learning is the future. It's not just about COVID-19. It's about globalization. It's about you getting the experiences of other people out there. Now, uh, to, to get to us more, maybe you would want us to give you more information on how you'd get to our institution. Mm -hmm. um, Bright Academy International is located at Upper Bunduma Gate. The road leading to Bokwai, it's 600 meters from Bunduma Gate. And it's beside the EPN Church. For those who know it, or after you pass the Bunduma, the the the, the, the hall, Bunduma the main gate, hall, the main hall, then you, you climb go up to a bit. EPN Church, just opposite the What's EPN, EPN Church? Church. It's a manual prayer network. It's okay. a, a, a church around there. All right. We're All just right. opposite that church. Mm -hmm. Or if you want, you can call us on six seven eight three one six three six one. Hopefully, um, the numbers are displayed on the screen. Six seven eight three one six three six one. Or send us a WhatsApp message on six. 653-118204. We are also available. You can log into our website to get more information on www.brightacademy.net. Bright is B R I T E. All in one word www.brightacademy.net. Or send us an email on info at brightacademy.net. Or why not? For those of you who are very social media savvy, you like browsing us on Facebook. Twitter, Bright is on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. And don't forget, we have very, very um, um, beautiful packages. We have a five percent discount on all our pro uh, on all our programs from now to the thirty first of March. So why not make use of this opportunity? Rush now to our premises, and we'll be very, very happy to receive you. Right. Wow, that's, that's marketing. <laughs> she has said it all. So <laughs> maybe nobody repeats it. <laughs> all right, Terence, you want to wear up, you know? Okay, thank you, Yannick. And to remind our tele, tele viewers, uh, at Bright Academy, we don't only um, look forward to, del to delivering uh, training, talking about our infrastructure. Like, uh, we, we, have all, we have all heard of a, a mother at a penja or a child at penja that cannot even manage a choronko. <laughs> <laughs> so at my academy, we actually oriented um, these people on how to use online tools to be able to carry on um, online studies successfully. Um, you, you uh, like parents, are also worried about their, uh, their children um, going online with, uh, with the fact that all uh, information online, there's a lot of uh, illegal stuff that a lot of young people are doing nowadays. But now we our, our platform, that um, www.brightacademy.net, we offer a parental management access, which these parents, they, they are able to access the progress of their children online. Thank you, Yannick. Thank you very much. And to you, uh, you, you want to also talk about immunization, eh? yeah. not, not only about I think, I think, online uh, learning. Mm -hmm. I think I want to encourage uh, Camunians to queue in into the online learning process mm -hmm. because it has a variety of learning styles where you can Zoom, you can download, they can forward documents immediately and a document can be projected or students can have the same kind of, uh, uh, let me say, material at the same time and diagnose the same material at the same time, not as face-to-face -face learning where a teacher is dictating, going front, coming back, and people are copying just what their next neighbor is saying. So we should adapt to e-learning. I think it has come to stay, even if COVID-19 goes, e-learning is just the what has taken over the world and nobody can do without. If you hear people say at the click of the button, information everywhere, it's e-learning. So right. it's not a matter of us saying that it is something of the wide or whatsoever. And I want to also talk on COVID-19. COVID-19 is a dreadful disease. Irrespective of the fact that we might have doubt to it or not due to lack of information from our government or other stakeholders who are in charge, we should learn to know that the whole world cannot be lying to us. Because if you hear worldwide people are crying COVID here, COVID there, it means that it's something real and it's taking away souls. So we should try to, 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 to respond to whatsoever the government is coming with, with a good intention so that we save souls. And I want to say that our leaders should lead by example. For example, in Nigeria and in, in US and many other countries, you, we saw the president sit first 
and they had the vaccine vaccinated. Our country, our country in Cameroon is not an exception. The President of the Republic, His Excellency President Pobia, whom we believe so much that he can pull, the, 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 he can always pull us along. Uh, he should stand and take the vaccine and we will follow suit. Thank you. Thank you very much. And to you, Doris? Okay, thank you, Yanni. <clears throat> I want to um, add that aside the online learning or on-site learning that we offer at Bright Academy, we also offer um, business consulting services from ideation, concept elaboration, model harmonization, business plan development, and we also have co-working spaces which are furnished shared working spaces that individuals um, or businesses can come in and rent it to use for any duration of time that they want to use it. And in addition to that, we also run an online bookstore where you can um, buy books and a digital library where you can read, get access to read uh, books or documents that will add um, knowledge to yourself. And um, also we do apprenticeship programs for students or graduates that um, um, leave um, or graduate from the university and they need that hands-on um, experience. We offer apprenticeship programs for them and place them to specific roles or um, organizations where they'll be able to get that experience that will need that they will need to skyrocket um, their career. And coming to the um, COVID-19, which is um, a global pandemic, I just want to encourage each and every one of us to be to pay particular interest about it and try to look at the positive side of the vaccine that is um, already in our system right now. Right. And of course, to wash their hands, of wear course. their face masks, <laughs> yes. to always uh, live a, a safe distance from each other. Yes, yes. These are all uh, cliches that we've been getting, which is important mm. and relevant during this moment. Dear viewers, that was the program today. We want to thank you for watching. We'll be together with you again on Saturday. But you can catch a rebroadcast of this program on Monday, 6 to 8 p.m. And from on Wednesday from 3 to 5 p.m. Until we meet again, say good night.